So now we're going to talk about retroviruses. And retroviruses are crazy. They definitely have a very complicated life cycle. And what they're going to do is use RNAs or genetic material instead of DNA that like we've been talking about with the other stuff. Um, they are going to be kind of crazy. And the, one of the reasons why is because they're going to carry an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Okay, so remember ASE means enzyme, right? Um, transcriptase would be something that would transcribe RNA from DNA, right? So um, hopefully you remember, whoopsies, how do I get to there? There we go. Hopefully you remember this, right? DNA gets transcribed into RNA that gets translated into protein. So transcriptase would do this stage, RNA to um, DNA to RNA, right? Reverse transcriptase is basically going to do this from RNA to DNA. That way, it can insert the DNA into the host cell's DNA and go through that whole thing. So kind of different than what we've been talking about, right? Um, <clears throat> so I have actually a picture of how um, uh, HIV works, and that's going to be, let's see, <laughs> retrovirus. That's funny. Um, okay, so this is going to be how um, HIV works. So what's going to happen is you've got your HIV, right, hum human immunodeficiency virus, and what's going to happen is it's got that envelope. So it's actually going to fuse with the host cell, like I was talking about here, and it's going to dump its contents into the host cell. Now, the red that you see there is the RNA. What it's going to do is use those little green guys, which are going to be the reverse transcriptase, and use that to make the double-stranded DNA. Now the DNA can actually be inserted into the host cell's DNA. Then that DNA can be transcribed into RNA and translated into proteins to make more viral components, and then it can fuse off and go and do its thing. So it's a very complicated process. It's kind of like going backwards and then forwards, which is kind of weird. Um, so it's a very complex virus. Lots of places where um, mutation can happen, and that's the big problem with HIV, is they find something that they're like, I think this is going to work, and then it mutates, right? So um, that's kind of the bad news about it. Good news is there's so many places where they think they might be able to find a way to deal with it, right? They could block the receptor process, so maybe now the um, HIV cannot fuse with the host cell, which would be great. Um, they can also use stuff that's going to attack the enzymes, reverse transcriptase enzymes, and make them faulty. Um, all sorts of different places where they could actually fight it, right? And so hopefully you know at this point that people don't usually die of HIV, right? They're going to die from AIDS. And so um, what's going to happen is HIV is the virus that actually causes AIDS, which is the syndrome, right? And what can actually happen is that whole lytic cycle, that's actually happening to the T cells, which is a type of white blood cell that they have. And so what will happen is that's why they go in for their T cell counts. And and if their T cell counts get too low, something as simple as a common cold could kill them because they don't have enough immunity. That's where human immunodeficiency comes from. So that's kind of how HIV is going to work. Kind of interesting. Okay, moving on. Here's another important part, oncogenes. So if I told you I was going to see an oncologist, an oncologist studies what? Hopefully you're thinking cancer. Well, if you remember from Bio 111, what is cancer? Cancer is just cells dividing really, really quickly out of control, right? So what's going to happen is if you think about what that lysogenic phase causes a virus to make a cell do, it's making the cell go through mitosis so that it can make copies of its DNA. Well, cancer is going to be cells dividing out of control. Viruses can cause cells to divide out of control. So now they're finding a lot of links between viral components and cancer. Very, very, very interesting. So kind of a neat thing to think about. Um, and the last thing we're going to fi uh, finish with is going to be prions. And the reason they're included in this section is because prions aren't really living. They're just proteins. And they're infectious proteins that actually can cause some problems very famous prion that you've heard of most likely is going to be mad cow disease. Um, it's called scrapey in sheep and it's called that because the sheep will actually scrape against stuff and, and almost bleed. Um, mad cow disease is obviously in cows where it attacks the brain and, and makes them kind of nuts and it's called Creutzfeldt jacob disease in humans. It's all the same idea, it's just what animal it's affecting. Um, so I have a little <laughs> 
thing that'll kind of help you to see how this works. So a prion is basically going to be a misfolded protein. So let's say this is your normal protein, this is your misfolded version. And that's okay, I mean not that big of a deal, but what's going to happen with a prion is it doesn't just get misfolded and stay there, it then pretends to be a chaperone protein. Now maybe you remember, a chaperone protein goes and folds other proteins. So what it's going to do is it's going to go to your brain proteins and it's actually going to say, oh no, 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 you're misfolded, you got to be folded this way, and it's going to misfold them, and then they are going to go and misfold more, and it becomes this huge chain reaction. So the onset of creutzfeldt jakob disease is actually can take like 10 years, but once it starts, it's really, really, really fast. So that's kind of the issue with it. I love that little animation. I'm very proud. Um, okay, so... The reason that prions can be very difficult to fight, and hopefully you remember, there was a big thing with uh, mad cow disease a couple of years ago, and people were saying, oh, it's from eating organ meat, it's from eating raw meat, you know, they were trying to figure out what it was. Um, one of the reasons it was hard to figure out is because they can have that incubation for, for 10 plus years. So it's really hard to go back and be like, did you eat a steak in this area 10 years ago? It's like, I don't know, right? So it was really hard to pinpoint where this was happening. And then the other kind of creepy thing is that although they're a protein, they are virtually indestructible with heat. So to get the meat hot enough to kill those proteins and make them ineffective to hurt you, it would be like eating a piece of charcoal. So like normal cooking temperatures are not going to kill it. So that's kind of eerie, right? So that's going to be prions, and prions kind of act like viruses because they're kind of like a parasite kind of thing. So I hope you enjoy that. Think about that while you're around the public. It's always a good time. And uh, in the next video, we're, or chapter I should say, we're going to get into bacteria. Even more fun.